Greetings again, Blade fans. This old sword with you. And um, got a special knife today that I've been looking at for a while and trying to get a hold of, and just recently was able to pick up a copy from GP Knives. So a shout out to GP Knives. Um, good discounted cost. I think these are uh, MSRP that are like $61. This came in around 46 and change. Uh, they had a pretty good discount, so shout out and kudos to GP Knives out in the Midwest. Grand Prairie Knives is what that stands for, I believe. So this is a Alessandra DeSantis design. You may know her as Hydra Designs. Uh, known for several interesting knives, including the We Made Hecate and the We Made Roman, along with, uh, I believe, a little fixed blade that um, Columbia River is doing by her design. So, um, as far as I know, she has two high end knives in the 250 and over sort of range from We, and uh, more of an economy blade. <laughs> Um, made by this one by Boker and another by Columbia River the fixed blade I was talking about so it's an interesting knife because basically what it is and um, no offense to uh, Alessandra a poor man's or poor woman's um, Hecate if you check that design out you'll see that it's very similar except that the handle will be all titanium and it will be faceted with a lot of different uh, milling cuts all over. And the blade on that one will be S35VN, I believe, or it could be M390. You have to check me on that. This is D2, so nowadays kind of an economy steel, but a good one, depending upon whether it's heat treated correctly or not. Um, thinner handles on this and a very bright kind of orange red steel uh, backspacer with a lanyard provision and a glass breaker uh, insert very pointed one we have honeycomb design on g10 this is g10 and not frn thin handle uh, ergos f feel quite nice I had to work it in a little bit this just dropped today uh, it is on bearings but it felt like it was on washers uh, the way the action was behaving I feel this one's going to take a little bit of breaking in I loosened and tightened the T8 pivot a couple of times um, kept adjusting until I could get a uh, centered blade it came through centered but came through quite tight so it's got a pretty strong detent but you can fail it it's a somewhat heavier longer blade and um, I'll give you some specs on it and then we'll talk some more about some of the details this is meant to be a tactical or defensive style knife but certainly it could fall into the EDC realm fairly easily we've got an overall length of 9.13 inches so it's a big boy blade length of 3.75 and uh, these specs come from Grand Prairie uh, GP knives sharpened length of the blade is 3.56 inches blade thickness 0.15 I believe that equates to four millimeters we'll check that d2 blade material and it is a uh, flipper style liner lock closed length 5.41 inches so you got plenty of handle there handle thickness of 0.52 inches so just a skosh over a half inch g10 handle material stainless liner stainless clip and it weighs 5.54 ounces so a little on the heavy side but not crazy heavy for something this size feels feels nimble feels light in the hand I uh, just want to check that blade stock in millimeters because I usually go by millimeters
3.3 or 3.8 rather. Let's try that again. Yeah, 3.8 millimeters. Okay, so some substantial stock. We've got a point that is relatively thin for the blade stock. It's ground relatively thin, but since it's a Tonto, you have a triangular um, profile there, not cross section, giving you a little more strength in that finer tip. But it's very piercy, and as you can see, the point is right on center for thrusting type movements with the blade. Um, the ergos are nice um, as far as, let me back out a little bit here. As far as a uh, saber grip goes, it's set up perfectly. The way the thumb ramp is, you've got some jimping here. It's coated over so it's not super aggressive. Um, got some milled out portions on the um, full backspacer there and uh, no jimping or anything down here. Got a relatively thin liner uh, for a knife that's supposed to be tough and robust. That's It bothered me a little bit and I encountered a little bit of lock stick. Uh, it's a little bit less now but I'm going to put it up to the microphone. Hang on a second. You can hear it. Hear that crunch? I had that right next to my headset mic. Um, so still getting a little bit of lock stick. Uh, does it prevent it from uh, closing easily? No, not at all. But it's rubbing a little bit. It may break in over time. But again, um, you can see the thinness of it. I would expect um, on a knife of this size, the liner material would be a little thicker. Then again, that would add to the weight, right? Um, and it's not a uh, frame lock, so you don't have a hardened steel insert and titanium, etc., etc., etc. I guess it's all the rage these days to do these bright colors on the back straps, and um, I don't really mind it. But uh, if the knife's going to be all black, I prefer that it all be muted, right? The idea is that it's kind of clandestine, undercover, etc. Here you have a folded over clip. It does have a um, button top type uh, screw, but it's kind of a flattened one. Um, seems to go in and out of the pocket okay. It's lowered. So you have um, about an inch sticking out there. Now, um, Hokai, I think, has a meaning behind the word. Let's see if I can find that for you. Um, nope, but there is a translation for it uh, in Japanese that I did see somewhere. I'm not going to get all into that. But um, some good specs out on uh, GP Knives if you want to check them out. GPKnives.com So it's a new design by Alessandra DeSantis. She is noted for her tactical designs. I think the only one that's maybe a little less than tactical is the Roman by We and I fell in love with that knife as soon as I saw it. It's an older style knife with kind of a long front flipper and um, I'm sure you've seen them around. If not, check my review out. Reviewed it uh, quite a few months ago. So you have this same uh, double hole design here on this Hekate as there is, uh, not Hekate, on the Yokai rather, <laughs> as there is on the uh, Hekate. Um, same general handle shape, uh, same Tonto-ish blade. Um, I haven't been able to use this to middle finger flick it at all because, as I say, although you can fail this, it's got a pretty strong detent. And you're not going to fail it if you simply go right after it light switch it 
Is it a push button? Yeah, you can push button it too. So either way, get a little bit more zap out of it if you push button the uh, the flipper. Um, one thing I noticed is that it is riding on internal stop pins, which is always kind of an interesting thing to see. If I, it's all black, but I'll see if I can show them to you. Yeah, there it is. You can see that those stop pins are basically riding in cutouts in the liners. So you don't have a stop pin here for the back of the the, um, the blade. You have those two stop pins that are basically bracing on the uh, the liners themselves. Not sure how it's going to hold up over time. Might be wonderful, but again, I think the design is great. Um, think maybe execution by Boker could be a little better. And uh, not disparaging Chinese knives, because there's a plenty of good ones. This is made in China. Let's check it out against another big one. The Ontario Rat 1. It is larger than the Rat 1 by a good, uh, I'd say, half inch, maybe. And for comparison, against the Griptilian significantly larger than the grippy. So let me know what you think. And don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. This old sword, signing out.